Hello guys and welcome back to our journey to the playoffs. We're joined today by Footwiz Ethan where he's going to be basically talking us all the way through his FGS3 and FGS4 qualifier leading all the way up to the playoffs. Hope you guys enjoy it. Right then guys, as I mentioned, we are joined here by Footwiz Ethan. Ethan, how are we mate? I'm all good, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm buzzing. Obviously, it was a good FGS 1 and 2, as we mentioned before in the previous episode. Obviously, the 1 was a bit stinky, but the 2, you've kind of uh, got back on track. Yeah. And time to look into FGS 3 and 4, which we will do in just a moment. However, we've got some TIFO information. We have now got our very own Footwiz TIFO on FIFA 22. And if you look above me and Ethan right now, you'll be able to see it. And Ethan, what a TV it is, eh? Oh, it's quiet. Every time I score, it's looking at Jamie Marker. What inspiration. <laughs> the inspiration I get for I scoring. Just, I, just see, I just see Jamie just doing the love heart every single time. And I'm just like, oh, here we go. <laughs> he loves it. But you guys will be able to get it yourselves for free by watching the streams on the EA Sports FIFA channel between Saturday and Sunday as well. Where hopefully you'll be seeing Ethan for the knockouts as well. Hopefully. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into it and have a little dive into FGS 3 and 4 and see how we got on. FGS3, round one, you get Luis Miguel. I don't know how to say his name. How do you say his name? Uh, I'll just say Miguel. Miguel. Miguel, Miguel, Miguel. That's it. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, you kick things off with a massive 5 1 win. How are you feeling after like your first game, 5 1 win, set the confidence? Yeah, uh, you always want to win your first game. It kind of just sets the tone for the rest of the day. If you lose, if you lose your first mm. game, it's there by the dogs. You fight against it from the start. You don't want that, really. Yeah, and it did set the tone for you. But unfortunately, it might have set the tone in the wrong way because you carried on scoring goals. Because in your next three games, you scored eight goals, six goals, and seven goals. Mm -hmm. And you only managed to win two of them because you lost against Outro and Fully. Well, who is Cali made? Yeah, I mean, it's not really good enough because uh, people who know me kind of have this agenda. I'm a defensive player. So to be conceding, uh, I think, <laughs> it's like 23, 24 goals or like... Three games of three is just not really good enough, to be fair. So I probably <laughs> did deserve to lose them two games. But yeah, I don't know. Mentality-wise, it was a bit of an issue, to be fair. Yeah, okay. And with your mentality, obviously, after going um, off the back of two losses, after obviously you got a one win, going into Jump or Jun MP7? Yeah, Jun 7 MP, Spanish player. Yeah, Jun 7 MP. Um, how's the mentality going into that? Because obviously it's kind of crunch time. Because if you lose, you're relegated. You're gone. You're out. Eliminated. Yeah, literally. So it's just like you lose your out, no pro points. But I think my mentality for that one, now I would have said I shouldn't care. Just go out and just play however you can to get the win. But I think back then I was still pretty, pretty passive. I think I might have edged a penalty win or something like that. So <laughs> now, now I'd say I should have played carelessly. But no, I think I played a little bit passive. So I was lucky to scrape over the penalty win there, I think. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Now, let's have a look into some of the goals which he scored against them four opponents. Starting with uh, Mr. Miguel, the first yeah, one. Let's see this one. I think this is a proper 3 5 2 goal, this. Yeah, tricky striker. <laughs> nice and well at the top. Ooh. A little dinkers. I wouldn't would have done that now, that's for sure. But <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's just instinct just to chip it, but it's an interesting one. Yeah, this one's against Outro, I think. Let's see. Where well, you're leading 1 0 as well. So, this is actually an important goal in the hindsight of it. Isn't it? Like, yeah, before. nice. Little, yeah, it's just 3 5 2. Build up nice. So, like, get the three boys up front involved. Camp two strikers. Nice one to use. Fully. I can't remember these goals, to be fair. So, it's nice to see them back. Yeah. By the looks of this is a big problem. You keep going into games with two Ooh. goal leads and you're losing it. What's yeah, going literally, on? No, I think <laughs> against Fully, I think it's Fully and um, Outro, I, I was 3 0 up in both games and lost both them games. This is a big goal, though, enough. to bring it back. Where let's you're see. losing 2 1. Oh, let's see. Oh, he made a mistake. This might be on him. Oh, my God. Oh, God. It, it's very low quality FIFA on display here. Extra pass, yeah. Extra pass, all touch the side goal. We take that. FIFA 22, the world of the extra pass. Right, so obviously, after having a bit of a shaky first four rounds, even, we managed to find. Some incredible momentum where you went the next three rounds scoring a grand total of 15 goals and conceding zero. And yeah, 6 0, 6 0, 3 0. Yeah, Talk honestly, I think that's when uh, the brain finally decided to start working. Like, uh, I, went, I went back to the roots of actually defending well. Conceding zero goals with like six individual legs of FIFA is pretty, pretty impressive no matter what, uh, what stage of time you're playing in. So it's definitely something to take. No, absolutely. And um, to obviously have the mentality to be able to go off the back after getting, obviously, not even beating loads, but like just conceding loads of yeah. goals. And obviously you score loads of goals. It's, it just kind of is a credit to yourself to be able to just get them clean sheets and just focus on your defensive game plan and score them goals as well. But anyway, moving on, let's show you some of the goals 
from them games. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks to this one. I actually remember this one. <laughs> We're seeing Chiellini. Oh, he's, he's... Uh, he's not something we it's not something we're proud of uh, in the FIFA team scoring goals like that, but before she has to be done in the pro scene. Yeah. Uh, below. Oh, he's a he's a French guy. He like he likes to hold the ball a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, green as well. Oh, yeah. Even even I like that one back then. I can see myself Never celebrating the face cam. The green. <laughs> it's Koala. Oh, I remember this goal as well. I remember this one as well because I was proper feeling myself after this one. I still three or two to go down the wing. I say one, two, drag back, fancy pass, there's a the gap, extra pass. Oh, right, that's cheeky. Oh. All right, that's cheeky. <laughs> right, so Ethan, obviously making it through Swiss. You go through to the knockouts. And the first game of knockouts, you match against Chu Sita, who I believe, was he the FGS1 champion? Um, Yeah, so at the time of playing, Chu Sita was definitely number one ranked. But like, it was kind of deserved to be playing him because of the, the poor Swiss run on paper. So it, mm -hmm. it's whatever. <laughs> it's kind of one of those ones you've yeah. taken, obviously. Um, in this game, you obviously had a bit of a tight game with him. You ended up going to penalties mm -hmm. and unfortunately losing on penalties. We did lose on penalties, but I do remember his winning penalty hitting my keeper in the face and going in the goal. So we'll uh, take down the pinch or <laughs> so. But you did manage to obviously gain yourself 75 pro points, which put you on 125 pro points. Now, before we move on to FGS4 to show you how Ethan got on, we're just going to show one of the goals Ethan scored against True Seater. To pretty much take it to pens. Let's see what formation I'm looking at. I think we see 40 throw on here. Oh, through ball. I do not do them after, that's for sure. If if I don't see it coming, he can't see it coming, that's for sure. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. No, look, like I mentioned before, taste 125 pro points. What is your headspace going into FGS4? Because obviously there's a lot which needs to happen. Like mm -hmm. you need to have a good tournament, don't you? Okay. At the end of the day, because the way like the, the playoff table works and stuff and like qualifier table works, sorry. Yeah, so at 125 pro points, it's like, it's not bad, but like, we all knew, because that's a couple of us about 125, um, we all kind of knew we need a big performance, but like, I've always peaked towards a late, later end of the season, so like, there's pressure on me to perform, but I kind of like that, like, I knew that I need to perform to expectations, so, yeah. I was looking so forward to could... it, to be fair. Mm, so you kind of thrive off the pressure kind of thing, and like... Hope that other people will crumble, which I think we see yeah. a lot of people doing that crumbling from it. Um, now we're going to kick things off. Obviously, FGS4, you get a buy. That's the most yeah. important thing. The reason why you forget a buy is because you finished the highest ranked player in your region in Division Rivals, right? Yeah. And there's an odd number of players who signed up to the FGS qualifier. So even got a buy, so that puts in one and out, which is perfect. Um, round two, this is where it gets a little bit hairy and a little bit spicy. He matches up against Footwiz Nixneb. Who is obviously his 2v2 teammate, obviously Footwiz teammate, and uh, yeah, and, it's uh, a bit of a weird one, wasn't it? And, and he, he's also he's also like about five feet to my left as I'm playing him. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So we're all in the HQ. Nick Steb's literally like a couple of feet to the left, and <laughs> you just hear his dad go, "No, no, no," and we just knew that they'd match each other, didn't we? Yep. But obviously, saying that, um, friends apart, that's obviously a brilliant win. So match up against Nick Steb, who. Obviously, as a top player, to convincingly beat him 6-2 is absolutely massive for, obviously, your Swiss games going in, isn't it? Yeah, of course, because uh, I played Nick Seb, we played uh, a lot at the start, to be fair. And, like, he always, like, mm. I, I, know, I know, like, if he gets in summer box, there is serious issues, alarm bells going off. <laughs> so, as long as I didn't keep him in summer box, I was fine. And luckily, like, I I think I went 3 up in 25 minutes, so it, it kind of set yeah. the tone for the rest of the game, <clears> unfortunately. Mm. And uh, in terms of round three, to get yourself 3-0, you beat Danny the 7th. 2-1, which is obviously a good result. And also you beat David SS07, 6-2. So, so far, you're scoring goals. You're not conceding a lot, but more importantly, um, you're beating good players as well. Yeah, because uh, Nick Stavolsi <laughs> is Nick Stavolsi. Like, he's just, what, I feel like he's very underrated. Unfortunately, he he didn't perform to how good he really is. This is like, he doesn't really, yeah. the tag room is big to me, personally. Uh, the next game was against uh, Danny, who made the World Cup the previous year. So again, big win, good player. Mm -hmm. And David Assessor won ECL. So again, like three three very tough opponents in Swiss. Like people you don't be playing at the early stages. So three big wins. No, absolutely. And also, you went on to play against Colin X, 52. Beat him 3-1 as well. And um, after that game, you match up against our very good friend, Mr. Tex. How is your mindset going into that game? Because obviously, you're 4-0. Oh no, you're five no, and five oh, actually. Be, yeah, you're five, five and oh, so you've made it through to the knockouts yeah. already. So these next two games, a lot of people look at it and say like they're nothing games, but at the same time, 
the higher seed you are, the better chance you've got of getting a buy in the next round, right? Yes. So this is still obviously a massive game for us. Yeah. So uh, if you if Tate's going to downplay it, to be fair, he's already made he already made playoffs. The team that game probably didn't matter. for me. I need to buy. I need as yeah. many purples I can get. So I need to buy. So I was proper swear that game out. Luckily. Mm. I think a fair few things went my way, but yeah, the scoreline ran away at the end. But, um, yeah, so the scoreline yeah. says 9-2, but I feel like it was 8-2 before, but Tex may have not wanted to hear the, I hate to be Tex, or I hate to be Tex, so might have done yeah, an offside trap. I, I respect it. <laughs> but no, to like I say, like, to beat quality players like that, and then, you think it was bad playing Tex, then you match up against Tuga for the 7-0 yeah. game to see pretty much who guarantees herself the buy and obviously the highest seed. Um... And you beat him to 5-2. Yeah, so literally a flawless switch run, which is actually, it's not just like a flawless switch run, which is like, oh, he, he done well. Like, it was like genuinely six high quality opponents, which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So it was, mm -hmm. I was very happy. Like you literally can't get better than that. But people are probably wondering, okay, what's different to FGS4 than other FGSs? So there's a number of things, okay? So I'll let you know. I was there, okay? <laughs> so I was there, sat behind him. Um, the Red Bulls, the yellow Red Bulls yeah. as well. Tropical Red Bull, shout out to Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, Red Bull. Hand warmers, hand warmers as well. All right. So there's, there's little things, boys, which you can add into your game and add into like your surroundings, like which will help you get better. Yeah. I'm right, even then I pretty much just buy it. He's, he's right. not wrong. <laughs> All right, let's show some of the goals from FGS4 and see how we got on. All right, so the first one is against Nick's there. Against Nick's there, what's this one look like? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like a flashback to Chiellini one. Oh, a little bit lucky. Oh. It's a little bit lucky. Think about aim it, but we adapt this situation. So, oh, this one was no, because Devon told me it was the last minute of the game, so I played it different. Oh, yeah. Let's pass inside, extra pass. Green, yeah. I mean, a li little oh, bit fortunate to pass inside, but good goal. Nice little ball over the top. So, ball. That's your hold up. Lasko. Yeah, that's a very, very tidy goal against a good player. That so. is a nice goal. Against Colin. I can't remember this one. I dragged that with sent him in. Yeah, it's a good pass. Oh, see, like little, little things thing could be well. Like, that pass could be intercepted, but you take it and look at just like three lot. So I should be able to Absolutely. see the game there. Against Tex, what are we saying? That's a ball there. Yeah, extra pass. Oh, a extra yes. pass, FC. Yes. So it's a nice little goal, though. It's two go. Oh, I remember this one. Get Usman on his bike. No way does he speed through. <laughs> Get Usman on his bike. There's just no defender yeah. there. He's just kind of just I bowled that. On. I should have passed that across, but obviously, luck was on, on my side. Yeah. No, that's brilliant. Now, obviously, that sent you into the knockouts, mm -hmm. which is massive. And at this point, you've guaranteed yourself, I believe, 100 pro points because you got the buy? No, so getting to knockouts gives you 50, but obviously, I got a buy for being the top performing player. So I, got, I started in 75. Okay, brilliant stuff. And obviously, you beat Mark Zhu, who's obviously a really good player. Yeah. You convincingly beat him 5 1. And we're going to show one of the goals from that game. Let's see. What, oh, Tilpan have you got? Let's see. Little byline. Little oh, byline. A, 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 nice little, a nice little touch there. Oh, I cancelled fake shot. Yeah, nah. Really, that really was my qualifier. That's a nice goal. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. And obviously, you went through to the next round. Mm -hmm. Sadly, you lost to David SS, who's the guy obviously you beat 6 2 in Swiss from the day before. Um, what do you think went wrong there? Um, I think he just adapts our play, so I guess it's uh, massive respect to him because I I I bad him the first time we played, so two ways right now. But like he he bad me when he mad most in knockouts. So fair play to him. I feel like if I played anyone else under four miles in, I think I would have won. But as I'd already played him, he knew exactly what my game plan was. So fair play mm -hmm. to him. He adapted and beat me when he mad most. So that was what it was, unfortunately. <laughs> but overall, obviously. Nothing matters because you've actually made it to the playoffs anyway after all of this. Yeah. So it was all worth it. Um, obviously, we did need a few things to go our way, didn't we? Because you was in like 20th in the leaderboard, joint 19th. Yeah, joint 19th, um, but 20th on tiebreak. Yeah, so can you just explain obviously how the tiebreak worked and obviously how you managed to end up getting the spot? Yeah, so tiebreak was a very, very awkward situation. There was four of us the same amount of points. And uh, there was four of us, Deshi, me, and Doni, and Redlack. So the tiebreaker works off... Uh, your high, highest average finish, then your highest placement and division rival skill reign. And me and Andoni, who finished 21st in the end, were separated by division rival skill reign over the four seasons. 
So it's very, very That's interesting. Insane, it? It's so crazy when you think about it, yeah. But it all prevailed, and obviously you ended up getting um, to the playoffs. And obviously this week coming up, we're going to be at the playoffs. First game's mm -hmm. Thursday, Swiss. Be mm -hmm. able to keep an eye on your Twitter and stuff, obviously giving updates. And hopefully we can make it through to the knockouts. And if we do, hopefully we can make it through to the World Cup in Copenhagen as well, right? Of course, that's the aim. Nothing but the that aim. That is obviously the plan. Uh, we will be vlogging it as well. So there will be a vlog coming out on the YouTube channel. So keep your eyes peeled. If you do want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and obviously follow Ethan's journey um, in the description where I'll leave his links and stuff. But apart from that, thank you for watching FGS 3 and 4 recap. And we will see you on the next one. Thank you, Ethan. All right, in a bit.